What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Against All Odds podcast. I'm here with a familiar face, Anthony. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? So if you guys don't know, Anthony played on the uh, Roughnecks last year with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's back in town, which we'll obviously talk about in this podcast. So uh, let's just roll the intro and let's get started. Okay, so before this podcast even starts, I'm going to hit it <laughs> with an ad. So if you guys have been following along, you guys have already heard about chaossoccergear.com. Chaos Soccer Gear is just a young soccer brand that is really trying to start up, add more products and everything. They have a nice, really cool ball that I've played with. It's like a very cool Aztec pattern, has a ball pump t-shirt. They're looking to add more products, more and more products. So if you guys want to check them out, uh, they are sponsoring this video. So you can find their link in the first link in the description box, chaossoccergear.com. So if you guys are just listening to this in your car or something, chaossoccergear.com. Um, so thank you to them for sponsoring the podcast. So Let's get into it. Anthony, welcome. What's up? Yeah. So you're in Tulsa now. Yes, I am in Tulsa now. Is it weird being back in Tulsa after? after, Uh, I mean, because you were here for nine months. No, honestly, no, it's not. It feels really good to be back. Like I, I kind of feel like I'm home again. That's That's good. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you were back here. I mean, we'll talk about all off season while you're back, but pretty quick, you're back here because of like, uh, you're kind of bouncing around from doing trials and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so, now you're in the limbo p- phase, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this off season has been kind of a crazy ride. I've been bouncing around all over the place, but I mean, I'm back here in Tulsa now. Uh, there was a family here that I was really close with and they've invited me to a birthday party that they were having. So I came down for that. Uh, and I'm in the midst of some a couple trial options. So we're just trying to see what best, best fits. Yeah, so it's cool. So now you're going to stay at my place tonight? Yes, I'm going to be here tonight. Sleeping on the couch? or do you, And we'll either pull it out for a full bed or a couch, whatever you want. Whatever. Like, I'm honestly, this couch is really comfy, so I'll probably <laughs> just leave it like this. And We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I've had to sleep in, in uh, some pretty bad places, so yeah. this, is, this is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is good to see you, too, because, I mean, I saw you up in Ottawa. Mm-hmm. But before that, like, I, I I saw you once our last game of the season in mm-hmm. where, I mean, when we played Reno. So I guess mm-hmm. after Reno, that was the last time I saw you. Got to see you up in Ottawa. Mm-hmm. But that's what's hard too about being like a pro is that like you make these really good friends yeah. and then all of a sudden yeah. you could never see them again, you know? Yeah. So it's good to see you multiple times after this happens. Yeah. And honestly, like to add to that, it's crazy because towards the end of the season, you know, it's a really long season, right? And so yeah. we, were, we were seeing each other so many like so many days of the year and we're kind of just like well i don't i don't really want to see like we don't really want to see each other anymore you know and so towards the end of the season i was just like i was actually sad when i was leaving and it's funny because a couple months before the season ended i'd be like oh man i can't wait till till like i go home and like i have my off season but as it got closer and closer to the day i was kind of like like well what am i what am i supposed to do now like i'm leaving all my friends and stuff so it's funny that you say that yeah because it's pretty tough when you have to leave after you build those relationships yeah it's like the grass is always greener like mm-hmm. once you're mm-hmm. here and you're training every day you're kind of like man i would kill for a week off mm-hmm. be back home with my family be back home in portland do whatever yeah. then you get there for a week and it's great but then you're kind of like man i'd kill to be back in tulsa training yeah. all the time yeah. Mm-hmm. um but yeah so how was so after tulsa ended so after that we played the very last game with the roughnecks you were here for like a week right i was here for a week so i was I was one of the last guys who stayed back. Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing extra training and I didn't do much training myself, but I, I ran a lot of private sessions while I was here. And so I was here for about a week and me and Jeff, we drove back. So we went from here uh, to Michigan, from Michigan to Toronto and then from Toronto to Ottawa. So it was a, it was a really long ride back and, and Jeff just had surgery. Yeah. So he wasn't fit to drive. So I had to drive most of the way, most of the, uh, the way back and it was really long. Yeah, and mm-hmm. we're, we're talking about Jeff Adai, uh, like uh, one of the center mids from last year with the Roughnecks, mm-hmm. and he's close friends with us too. Now he's over in Finland. Finland, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is crazy. It's crazy, yeah. Cause it's I, insane how, things, how fast things change. He literally ended the season, like you said, getting menis- meniscus? It was meniscus, right? Yeah, meniscus. Meniscus yeah. surgery. Not a complicated surgery at all, mm-hmm. but then now he's over in Finland playing in the uh, first division. And he's been playing, you know what, he's been playing a fair few games, and his team has been winning, so they're performing well, and... It's just, it's just like you said, it's just things can change fast Mm -hmm. for the better or for the worse. And so it's Mm -hmm. it's sick though. It's it's really cool to see, um, Jeff doing so well. And he was like, I mean, the setup looks really, really good. Mm -hmm. Like the, the team, the stadium, the, uh, Gucci's going to knock over my camera. Gucci. Hey, come here. Come here. Good. 
this cat. Um, but no, it's, it's cool. He's in a really good setup. So, and we'll talk right. about that too. But, um, and then, so you drove up and did you, did you one night, like one day you drive all the way into Ottawa or what? No, no. So we drove up to Michigan and Jeff, he used to go to a uh, university in Michigan. So he had a really close friend that, that was there. Yeah. Uh, and so we ended up staying the night there. I think it was, what was it? Nine hours, nine hours to Michigan. It wasn't too far, nine hours, or it might've been 10 uh, 10 hours so not too far we drove there we slept there the night and then we went to toronto from michigan which is only like four five hours bad. and it was pretty cool so we stayed there for two nights just because uh we had friends who were living there at the time and we're like hey, since we're in toronto we might as well just stay here for a bit so we did that for the two days and then ended up driving back to ottawa so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good and how was that's your first year in the usl yeah how was that honestly like i had so much fun uh for being in my first year i think I played a, a lot more than I thought I would soccer wise. It was, it was pretty tough because the season's so long. And so you start off the season and you're fully fit and you're like, Hey, you know what? You have all these goals that you want to do. Cause for me, I wanted to work on all these specific things to enhance my game. And like, as soon as you realize you can't, you can't yeah. really do that because the season's so long. And even when there's games where you're not playing or you're, you're not in, in the roster, it's, it's still tough because you, you have to make sure that you're managing what you're doing, what you're eating and stuff. So overall, I had a really good, good first year. I think, uh, I think I had a lot of fun traveling and going to see different places. Like it was really cool to see. I've never been to California before. Oh yeah. We went to Orange County that first time, uh, when we went to Vegas and LA. And so it was towards the be uh, beginning of the season when we were, we were like top of the table. So it was, we were winning and it was mm -hmm. a really good feeling towards the end of the year it was tough right because we're we, we weren't winning as much as we wanted to and and things weren't going like like we wanted to but it was it was still a great uh, a great year and a great experience for me i feel like that's good and if you guys haven't heard the last podcast with anthony we did a full podcast mm -hmm. last season mm -hmm. talk about your whole career but you've played like you bounced around everywhere. You've mm -hmm. been in Ottawa mm -hmm. and in Canada. You played in DC United U twenty threes, right? Yeah, yeah. Went over yeah. to France and and was it Spain? France. I went to not Spain, so I went to France uh, for a bit. I went to New Zealand. I went to Australia. Yeah, uh, and so I've been everywhere. But this was my first official pro fully pro league, fully pro exactly. setup. Exactly. Exactly. Well, so you know, when I was in New Zealand, it was a it was pro setup. Yeah. Uh, but it, I don't think they counted as pro. If it's like it's always it's such a gray area. It's so hard. Like, I personally, I really think that if you are, it's more of a lifestyle change mm -hmm. and a life and the way you view it. Like, if you are mm -hmm. going abroad and let's say you're playing six division Germany, you know, mm -hmm. but you're making enough to live off of. You have an apartment, you know, mm -hmm. or you're going to New Zealand and you're playing in a lower league in New Zealand, but you're paid like a decent wage mm -hmm. to live off of. You have housing, mm -hmm. you have everything taken care of. You have a car. Yeah. Like it's, it's like, it's, it's a gray area of like where it transitions from semi-pro to pro. Yeah. And I kind of view it as like, if you're there treating it as a semi-pro league, like mm -hmm. you're from New Zealand or whatever, and you're playing there just as for fun while you go to play college, exactly. then sure, yeah. that could be a semi-pro setup. But if you're mm -hmm. a pro coming from abroad, mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. there, and your whole focus is to play pro, to play soccer, I mean, that's a pro contract. Yeah. So it's 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 a gray area. It's always, but it's hard. It's like, where do you draw the line? The Some line, people yeah. do it all money-wise. Some people do how many how the set, setup is. Mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. hard, you know? Yeah, but yeah. but this was like the full like I mean the USL is a fully pro league, mm -hmm. great league. You have some great teams traveling. It's training five six times a week. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's that a good was, league. That was a, that was really fun. Like training every day, because obviously we love it, right? We play soccer because we love it. But training every single day, you're only going to get better, right? Mm -hmm. And constantly competing. And last year, like I'm sure you remember how much we competed. When yeah. It was like it was like an everyday type thing where you come in, you grind. You want to be a part of the winning team, and so mm -hmm. yeah. You're, if you're if you're winning, you're talking like shit. Yeah. <laughs> if you're losing, then you're getting mad and talking shit back or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then it, it's two touch before training, two touch after training. We'll hit crosses and we're yeah. talking crap about oh my left foot's better than your left foot. I'm right yeah. footed, you know whatever. Yeah. It's fun, but it pushes you to be like a better player. So it's it's yeah. really fun. Um, and uh, wait, I actually just had to get this out there, but. Uh, I'm a better two-touch player than Matt, if you guys knew. So uh, I just yeah, wanted to quickly well, get at that. Maybe maybe you won a few games when I was recovering from surgery, but once I was, once I'm back, it's easy. we can play two-touch. We can go outside right now and play two-touch. Two let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I got a ball right over here. Um, no, it's really funny. I mean, it is. And you're it's, you're surrounded by two when you're here, like in this league. Since every single mm -hmm. person is coming abroad and is and is treating this 
like their full-time job. Mm-hmm. It, you do. It's like everybody wants this for their career. So it's a cool setup to be in versus in other setups where, you know, some guys have school, some guys are doing mm-hmm. other jobs or whatever. Yeah. So it's cool. And you played in some pretty big games. You played in like Sacramento Republic when we played yeah. there. You played, yeah. did you play in the New Mexico game? I played. So the New Mexico game was the first game I started. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It was our second game of the season. And that, like that was that was such a good experience for me. Even though we lost that game, we lost two one. But I learned so much from that game, like not just football wise, but the fans. Like when yeah. when they scored, bro, it was like it was crazy because I just heard like all the like fans cheering in New Mexico. They have a really good fan base. I yeah. think there was like nine thousand people. Yeah, I was gonna say in I that game, eight and or so, nine thousand. Yeah, yeah. Eight, yeah. And so it was super. It was super loud. It was such a good feeling. Like to feel that, obviously we it sucked because <laughs> yeah. we were getting scored on, but it was such a good feeling to to feel that. And also, I remember the specific play where I, I was dribbling on the left side, mm-hmm. and I could hear the fans behind me saying like, "Oh, you suck! Like, yeah. get out of here!" Like they're all just like just like trash talking me, and I was just like, like even though it was so loud, you can pick up on things like that. And it was New Mexico. That was that was my first game. It was it was huge, and also Sacramento. That was uh yeah. Uh, there was like nine, ten thousand people at Sacramento game. Sacramento was was it wasn't loud, as loud as New Mexico, yeah. but you can feel like the atmosphere because it was it was more boxed in, and so it was definitely huge. Yeah, but I what, think New Mexico was definitely the biggest. I think that was like the bit like the most fun game. The most fun game, like as far as atmosphere and 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 my first game. Obviously, I was nervous, but like I just I I think I I for me I felt like I I played well that game, mm-hmm. uh, being as that it was my first start, but definitely uh one to remember yeah mm-hmm. uh, that's like one like a memory you'll have forever mm-hmm. like because it's like mm-hmm. your first like in, playing in front of that s- setup or whatever mm-hmm. i always love the uh the the big drum like that it feels like yeah, you can yeah. almost feel it feel you know it, yeah. like hit like it's just like at a concert where you can feel the bass yeah it, that's what it's literally like on the field you can feel the boom 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 of the drums or whatever it's just really cool uh mm-hmm. but yes i remember like my very first time it was an exhibition game at republic it, when i was with sacramento republic training with them i got in the exhibition game against atlas mm-hmm. and i remember it was like my first time i'd been watching the games for my first time on the field yeah. and the same thing like ten thousand people there and you feel yeah. the drums it's yeah. just it's such a cool memory that i still can put myself in there now and that was mm-hmm. five years ago mm-hmm. i can go back like that and i can still remember my view of the field and mm-hmm. it's really cool um and then, so how did, how was the rest of, so you went back to Ottawa, you got back to Ottawa after like two weeks or, or so. So probably, yeah. what is this like end of October? End of October. Uh, let me, th- yeah. End of October, closer to my birthday. Cause I remember, so my birthday is on October 28th mm-hmm. and I remember celebrating my birthday when we got back to Ottawa. So it was close to uh, October. And so for me, I had this like this huge plan of what I was going to be doing off season. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to take maybe a couple days off and then go right into it. And like I was so wrong because as soon as I got back, there was so many things that like I had to do catching up uh, with OPSM and just a bunch of different things with life. Obviously, with my family, with not seeing them for a whole mm-hmm. a whole year, it was really tough. And the thing is for me, because uh, before I came into Tulsa, I was in Australia. Right. And so I was gone for even longer than I had expected to be. And so when I originally when I came back, I was like, hey, you know what? Uh, next Monday, I'm going to start like all my training, like all my training programs, everything, like getting stronger and faster. And so that one week turned into like, I'm going to be honest, it turned into like two, three weeks of me just like not consistently like off. There was days where I'd be either in the gym doing some light work or uh, playing in the league. So I'm not like the games that you came to play with us when yeah, you, yeah. When you uh, came up to Ottawa for the combine, uh, like doing that every once in a while. But it wasn't it wasn't like a real routine where I got into. And so that was really tough because right when I got back for me, I was I was kind of wondering what would be my next move. So we're where would my next team be? Where would I have to go to trial uh, and different things? So it just, it didn't really plan out like I, I planned it, which was, which was, yeah, pretty weird. But yeah. And it, I think like what I found, cause I've, I've done like how many, five off seasons now, six mm-hmm. off seasons. And I've done everything from like not mm-hmm. taking a single day off. Like literally the moment I'm finishing season with yeah. Orange County, I did this. As soon as I finished the season with Orange County, I went the next day into the gym, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. oh, it was like Kobe mentality, stuff like that. Yeah. And I mean, it was worked out that off season, but like, mm-hmm. and then I've had off seasons where I've taken two weeks completely off mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. I've done a mix or whatever. And I think, I think what I like is to like, like really batch the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. So like, I know same thing when you get back, you have to see your grandma, you have to see your family, you have to yeah. go out to dinners, you have to do stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I really like doing the 
I'm off now in off season to batch it in my head and be like, okay. I'm going to take a week, yeah. just a week or two weeks or, you know, 10 days, whatever. Yeah. And be like, these 10 days are about seeing people, going out to dinners, enjoying mm-hmm. life, doing the stuff that I've really wanted to since I've been missing out for the last nine months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But after those 10 days, then it's like, for me, it's like, then I'm going to slowly ramp up back into training. And then I'm going to take like a week off for Thanksgiving mm-hmm. or like three days off for Thanksgiving. And then like, five days off for Christmas or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, I kind of like batch it like, like that, you know, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And it, but again, you stuff can come up, you know, exactly. and, exactly. and, and, and like, it's, it's tough, but I, I've had it like better off seasons and, and worse off season for this off season for me mm-hmm. was probably like, like the least amount of work I did. Cause mm-hmm. I've struggled with a lot of injuries. I didn't want to overdo yeah. it, mm-hmm. but, um, but like I took a lot of time, like, and was trying to be smart with it, especially because I had a contract. So it's like, yeah. you know, because it's a very different training. Like I need, need to be ready and game fit for a trial versus I just need to be ready to come into preseason, you know? Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. So it's hard. Um, mm-hmm. And then so how was like, you know, how how was your training? And like, were you doing like the OPSM trainings in that little area? So or? that didn't start yet, right? Uh-huh. So when I first got back, uh, a lot of the athletes that we do getting training is either players who played pro or players who were playing in university and college, right? And so when I first got back, that, that hadn't started yet. And and as soon as I got back, actually, I had a trial uh, and with a team in the Nisa League and, uh, in Charlotte, right? So I went I went there, uh, me and Hensley, we both went there. Mm-hmm. We, we spent a, a week out there, and the setup was really good. So I got there. It was it was better set up than I expected because I wasn't too sure about how the Nisa uh, league would be, and so it was really good. Uh, I went there. I did well. Uh, the coaches were 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 liking it, and uh, obviously the coaches were talking to my agent, and they were in communication uh, of what we could do to get me out there. And um, obviously things didn't work out <laughs> as we planned. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, you, is there just, a reason why, or just I think it's because uh, I don't know if I could say too much about it but yeah uh because so the team that i was trialing for i'm not sure if they're if they'll be playing in the in the nisa league next year because they've just been having a lot of uh issues within something behind the scenes of of with the owner and whatnot and i wasn't 100 percent sure like what the reason what was like why not it wasn't one of those situations where i went on a trial and i wasn't good enough right i felt like when i went there i showed that I had that that uh, USL experience and I was a good player and the coach was really keen on signing me, but it was just one of those situations where I don't think it could happen because of what was happening yeah. with the club type yeah. thing. So and how frustrating is that? Like you have a good trial, they like you. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good trial, they like you, but then with circumstances out of your control, it doesn't work out, you know? It's, and you just like you invested all this time, this effort in there. Yeah. Things are going well, you're excited, you start envisioning of like how's it going to be next year? You know, mm-hmm. where am I going to live? How am I going to like the city? And yeah. then it, everything just changes like that. I like guess tough. It's, it's, it's really tough. And so at the time it was only November, uh, right. So closer to November, uh, the end of November, December. So it was still, it was still a while ago. So I guess it was frustrating, but I was kind of like, Hey, you know what? This didn't work out. I still got a lot of time before a lot of teams are into preseason. And I've still got a lot of times before a season like USL League One or USL are starting. Mm-hmm. So I, I looked at it as, as, hey, it's okay. It didn't work out. That's fine. There'll be more opportunities and there'll be different chances that you'll have. Yeah. Right? And and so it was one of those situations where I was just like, hey, you know what? Whatever. We, we put our head down. We move on to the next next uh next availability yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's and i i, f- I had the same like uh in germany with the regular now Liga team same mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. was there for like two three weeks and yeah. then they loved me and like i was like doing really well mm-hmm. starting to become really close with the guys like doing everything yep. same thing and then sponsor who was going to be the sponsor for my contract because in germany yeah. they have like sponsors to pay for players mm-hmm. backed out at the last minute Literally, it was like, we're going to come in, mm-hmm. you're going to sign for us. Here's your money. Here's your roommate. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll come in tomorrow on Sunday to sign the contract. Yeah. And then I get a call, no call on Sunday, Monday. Yeah. Oh, Matt, we want you. Everything was here, ready for you. Yeah. But the sponsor backed out. And it's so frustrating to be like, are you kidding me? Like, this is yeah. going to be my first pro contract. And like, mm-hmm. it's hard. It, but like, that's how it works. And people don't yeah. understand. Like, it, things can change like that. Mm-hmm. And people don't understand that you can go on a trial and everything go right, but still for, there's a, a five other left backs, you know? Yep. And they mm-hmm. like you, but they're like, look, we just don't need you, you know? Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's like, it's, I always say it's less of like, are you good enough for the trial or the team? Mm-hmm. And more of, is just the situation right for you, to, you know? And so mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. very different. Um, obviously you have to be good enough, you know? Yeah. 
Gucci <laughs> likes you. Gucci's trying to, yeah. Um, and then so <laughs> after that, so you were in with a Nisa team. Yeah. Um, and so the setup was good. Setup was good. Yeah. yeah. And then um, so now in like December, like how, were you just in Ottawa for ma- most of December? Yeah. So December, I ended up going back to Ottawa, uh, and that's when the the training session started. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, as soon as the players were coming back in from school, we started doing training, and uh, we were playing. So I was playing on a weekly basis. Uh, keeping my fitness up i wasn't i didn't get into any gym routines uh as uh, around that time Mm -hmm. i think the time that i really started to go into the gym and started to really focus on on my next year's move was uh closer to january Mm -hmm. because during that time we had the women's combine and the men's combine coming up and uh like you were there so you seen like how how big it was this year and so everything that we had to put into it it took a lot of time and it took Mm -hmm. a lot of uh effort to to make sure that everything was going was going good and so uh even till then so imagine me finishing my my season in october with tulsa and i'm like man i'm gonna kill this off season i'm gonna do so much stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna be faster i'm gonna be stronger Mm -hmm. and then you fast forward all the way to january and i'm like man i haven't done anything that i i want i really wanted to Mm -hmm. and so came to that time and started training more and i ended up getting hurt so i i sprayed my ankle a little bit and i didn't think it was too bad i was like oh it's probably just like one of those sprains where it'll go away. So I kind of kept playing on it for a couple of weeks and I really hurt myself in one of the games. And I was like, Oh man, this, this might be like a serious, a serious injury. Like lingering right? one. Exactly. And so at the time, uh, Godwin was obviously, uh, trying to look at trials and different things for me. And so I was kind of like, Hey, you know what? It may be best for me to step back and, and, and just not train. And, and if an opportunity did come up, then I would have to be hundred percent for it yeah and so around that time that's when you came to that's when you came to ottawa mm-hmm. uh for the combine for for next year like or let's say your next off season are you gonna make it like a like a conscious effort to like to try to work out like to do more like to focus more on yourself like mm-hmm. for that training or is like do you think it was good to take that time off or like what, do you, what are you gonna do for both, next year a little bit of both uh-huh. i think a hundred percent i'm gonna be a lot harder on myself to do that because during the season all the things that I wanted to work on, when I try to work on it, I'd be too sore. Yeah. Or yeah. I, it would be it would be extremely tough to do that. So that's that time is so precious, right? Because that's the only time you really have to put in that that work. Uh-huh. Right. And then another thing is after I took so much time off, uh, when I started feeling better, when I started healing and I started playing, I felt I felt refreshed. Right. So all the stress that I had when I was playing in, in the uh, towards the end of the season where it's like, damn, am I going to start? Am I going to be a part of the lineup? Yeah. Like all that kind of went away, you know. And so it was a little bit of both where I was like when I started playing, I was like hungry again and I was I was pumped up to play. Mm-hmm. But then it was that part where I man, like I really I really worked on these things that I wanted to work on. Yeah. 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 I mean? yeah. yeah. It's it's a hard balance though, like, yeah. And then it, the last thing you want to do too is is to do too much, and then mm-hmm. once the opportunity does come up, a great opportunity, yeah. then it's like, well, I just tore my hamstring because I was doing mm-hmm. uh, all this, what you know, all this extra stuff. It's it, it's very mm-hmm. it's very tough to even in season it's tough to balance because it's like a, how much you do to maintain versus tr- try to make a little bit of push. But yeah. am I going to do too much where I'm going to be sore for when I do get my opportunity to start into play? Mm-hmm. It's it's always it's a balancing act. It's just a constant balancing act. Um, and, and then so uh, the, the in January, like you said, I came up for the uh, Ottawa the, the OPSM Ottawa Combine. Mm-hmm. You got that you guys put on, which always goes awesome. I mm-hmm. had a great time. Mm-hmm. Just freezing there always. <laughs> so can't believe that there's places in the world that just have snow there twenty four seven. But uh, I really like it. It's 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 a good. It's really cool. And. Um, I think that like what you guys are doing is just insane to have so many kids come out and have so many mm-hmm. coaches come out and scout mm-hmm. and how many kids got scouted was just insane to see. It was so it's cool, but mm-hmm. hectic, huh? Like I remember so seeing you, you were just running around I everywhere. I was like all over the place, right? <laughs> because like I was a driver, I, like I had to pick you up and you and Mimi from the airport and some coaches and things and obviously setting up uh, everything at the combine, but it was, it was hectic. We didn't like, to be honest with you, we didn't get much sleep and, but I feel like it worked really well because everyone we had there were so invested into that time. Mm-hmm. And even for you, when you came down, you helped us uh, like enormously, right? When you were like, you were coaching a couple teams in the, it's almost the like combine. I should be paid next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Godwin, Godwin will be watching this, this podcast. What's so. up, Godwin? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine. As long I always say, I was like, as long as you just keep, as long as I continue to be employed, yeah. I'll do this you're, every you're year. Fine. Yeah. 
no yeah 100 percent. so i like i feel like it, it went really well and then after that combine that's when i really started to like hey you know what i can start doing my workouts i can start going two days and mm-hmm. i can start so we train in the mornings with with the pro players and the university players and then later at night i'd be in the gym uh not necessarily following a certain training program but just kind of doing uh some things that i've learned throughout the year so whether it's like uh the workouts that you've that i've done from you right from the speed uh, mm-hmm. program that you gave me and the workout speed that i've seen the speed program link in the description <laughs> <laughs> and also like just some of the things that i've picked up throughout the year and the things that i need to work on uh-huh. uh, i don't think i had enough time uh to do that mm-hmm. because i was coming to the end of the month where i was like i had a couple of trials and so this is actually something that i haven't told you about yet but i had two different opportunities okay and so for me coming out of the usl i was like oh man like i'm pretty confident in myself that mm-hmm. I, wherever i go i can make it on that team yeah right? and so at this time i had two different options for trials okay and it, i could have made it that i went through both Mm -hmm. It just would have been really tight and really tough. And looking back at it now, like I don't regret anything that I do uh, with soccer. I never never regret because you never know. But I'm kind of like, oh, maybe if I went back and I thought about it differently, then maybe I would have done it differently because I had two trial opportunities in the USL League One. Uh Okay. And I was kind of like, hey, you know what? I'm pretty confident in myself. And the setup that I had in one of the teams that I was going was that they would give me two meals a day. They'd put me in a place to stay. Uh, I'd have roommates who have cars, so it would be really easy for us to get around. So that yeah. was my first option. And then my second option was that if I came down, it would be kind of like a combine uh, setting where I would go and train for two days. And if I did really well, they would keep me around for the preseason. I see. Okay. Yeah. And so during the combine setting, they wouldn't they wouldn't do anything, right? I would have to pay for my hotel and my accommodations and food and stuff. Yeah. And so like when you have these two options that I had, I was like, well, like which one would you think? <laughs> like it's like the, the the relationship and the conversation that I was having with the coach was like, hey, you know what? We just got to see you. Like, you just got to come in and we're going to see you. So I was like, well, obviously this is best for me, mm-hmm. you know? And so I took this one opportunity. And then now when I'm in this situation that I'm in now, I'm like, man, like if I could go back and do it differently, maybe I would go through both and then keep yeah. your options open. Because you talk about it all the time, you know, and you always say about always keeping your options open, right? Never turning anything down or mm-hmm. uh, just having more eggs. Like you say, more eggs in the basket yeah, is best, yeah. right? And so I uh, like looking at it back, I'm like, I, I could have done it differently, but these are things that we, we learn from and mm-hmm. it happens, right? No, it's, it's true. You learn from it. So the next time, like the next time it comes up, you're like, I'm going to go both. I'm going to do both. Exactly. Invest, it's, exactly. an, it's worth it to invest in myself, get a hotel out there, Airbnb. 100%. 100%. But no, it's true. It's, at the same time, you can't regret it though because it's like you could have gone there and, you know, mm-hmm. knock on wood, got seriously injured, you yeah. know? So it's like, you never know. Mm-hmm. But in the future, it's like, yeah, like you said, more eggs in the basket, you know? Exactly. It's exactly. just having as many opportunities. I always, I always like imagine like, I'm going to plant like a, like a little seed, like acorn, like 20 different acorns. Yeah. One of them is going to come up and be a big tree, you yeah. know? But if I only plant one seed, <laughs> That's true. It might, I might not get a tree. So I'm going to plant 10,000 of them, <laughs> as many as I can. Mm-hmm. But it is tough. It is tough. I mean, looking at that, and you get fed like, oh yeah, just come on in. Just want to take a yeah. look at you. It's like, yeah. well, maybe I don't need to do this because the combine yeah. is never fun, you yeah. know? And huh. at all costs, I would, I hate doing combines, <laughs> but it's like, it's an opportunity and yeah. I've, ha- I've gotten contracts from them. So it's like, it's tough, but I know how hard it is to be like, yeah. to do it when you have opportunities lined up. So that's, yeah, that's what happened recently in mm-hmm. the towards the end of the month. And uh, I went on the trial with the USL one team. I was there for two weeks. It was going really good. Uh, and so I think the team that I was playing for, uh, like I felt like I, I would fit their playing style. But when I got there, there were two other left backs uh, on trial. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and so um, the way it was going, it didn't look like they were going to sign me. You could right? almost feel and almost so, like instantly, right? Yeah. Could you, is, is that what you felt? Like Not instantly, because honestly, the first week that I went there, like it was good. Everything was good. Uh-huh. I was fitting well. And like for me, I, I never want to be like sound too cocky or anything, but I've I played in the USL championship, so I felt like I could I could play in that USL one league one, right? And so it's just when I got there, uh, the, the the type of defenders that they were looking for is not me, right? Because I'm not that I'm not that big defender that you'll have. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I like to play out the back, like uh, sharp movements, and quick stuff combinations, like that. quick combinations. You know that's my game, uh, but I'm not like like that big player like we were saying right and yeah. so i felt like you know what i think that's one of the reasons why they weren't keen on signing me and so 
I was just like, hey, you know what? That's that's okay. I can try and look uh, elsewhere and 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 try and set myself up with a better better uh, trial. And wait, can I keep talking? Yeah, yeah keep talking. Okay, I just turn on the, <laughs> okay yeah. The camera and start up myself like last time. Okay, okay, yeah. So that's that's basically what happened. And I so I recently before I came here, I had a trial with another Nisa League team. And uh, a lot of people have been in and out of trials with this with this club, and uh, like I'll be honest with you, the the way the setup was, it wasn't as professional as I thought it would be. Yeah. And so going in there, uh, and obviously Nisa is a, is a good league. There's a lot of good players that come out of it, but same thing, right? I was like, hey, if I played in the USL Championship, I can I can manage well in the Nisa league. Yeah. And so when I got there, it was one of those situations where. Uh, I was like, yeah, doing my thing. I went to training. I showed up, uh, showed my quality. We had one day. We played a couple games, and uh, yeah, I guess the 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 owner or the coaches just didn't think I was good enough or yeah uh, to play at that level. And but we've talked about it. It's just like setup. Like it's like the same mm-hmm. thing. It's like I could go into a trial having, and I think at the same time though, like I don't think you should feel um, bad about mm-hmm. having that mentality of like, I've played in the USL championship and I performed in this cha- in this league mm-hmm. that now going down to the USL league one, even though the, the, I mean, the margin, the difference is so small too, mm-hmm. but I think you need to have that attitude of like, I'm going to perform like I can do yeah. this. Like I should be a, a standout. I should do well. Yeah. And then when it doesn't work, um, or you don't get like a, you know, a contract, I don't think you should feel bad. It's just like what you said. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's hard to say that about yourself because it's like, you don't want to be like, Oh, am I delusional? Yeah, exactly. exactly. But yeah. it's it's yeah. It, I can't stress enough how how crucial it actually is just to finding the right situation, you mm-hmm. know. And you have to find you have to get it into a trial or into a team yeah. or into a setup that needs your position, that likes your style of play, yeah. the coach likes you, yeah. that the opportunity is there, and that's then true. when you perform, you perform and you grab it and, and you, you go. Well. Yeah, that's exactly what happened to me last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how I signed last year, right? Exactly. So I came, yeah, I came on trial with you guys. You guys already had a left back. The, there was no, there was no second left back, right? I came in, uh, I performed well. You ki- I remember coach, you killed it the first couple of days. Like, yeah. just I was like, wow, this left back's good. He's yeah, good. The coach, and then I really me. got to met, meet you, and I was like, this is <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, well, I'm pretty sure the first day I like defended you or something. I did something really good against you. I remember. Remember when you tried to take me on and I just like boom bodied you? No, no, no. no. You don't remember that? Nah, yeah, are you sure you that was your dream nah. before? <laughs> No, yeah. So like when I came to Tulsa, like everything just fit well. And you know what's crazy? Because remember when we went to the bowling? Remember when we did the yeah, bowling yeah, thing? Yeah. I wasn't even a part of the team and I was doing like the team events, right? So I just fit. Yeah. It's just exactly what you said. I fit really well. Oh, I fit really well with the team. Mm-hmm. And so I guess it just adds on to what you're saying, but it's just the perfect timing. and Yeah. I, and I, I, I still like, even though like with the other team that or the league one team that you, tr- that you went on trial with, yeah. you said that like the first week went well, but then the second week you kind of feel it fading the interest yeah. or whatever. Yeah. For me, I felt like uh, I'd say 80, 90% of the time when I go into a trial, I mm-hmm. can tell almost immediately yeah. what the vibe is it's true. and how the interest level, you know, mm-hmm. like, am I, and it's not like almost, I, I, I guess I could say. I can mm-hmm. tell within those first five, 10 minutes if I'm going to be signed or not. It's like even how they pick you up or the ride you get to the to the trial, you know? Yeah, yeah. You can tell like the these way they little talk things. To you, the yeah, way the way they, they talk you. to you. Yeah, yeah. The way like if you come in and the coach goes, hey, come over here. So yeah. you grow it. You know, you're at Tulsa last name, year. They know your name. Yeah. 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 Or you come in and it's just like, yeah, what's your name? Oh, wh- yeah. What position do you play? You're like, ah, shit. This is not, <laughs> this is not going to be a good trial. But you can always perform yeah. and change their mind. But I'd yeah. say eight, nine times out of 10, you can almost tell what's going to happen, the outcome of the trial, Mm -hmm. just from the, the feeling that you get. And you can always, like I said, you can always change their mind, but Mm -hmm. it's tough. It's tough. It's always everything. Um, and then, Mm -hmm. um, and then, so now like pretty much that was the last, that was, that was the last trial. So that was a couple days ago. That was just a few days. Yeah. Yeah. So you finished there. I finished there. The, my trial was only one day, whereas like, so the, the, the club, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to speak bad about yeah. any industry or anything, but basically the club that I was trying, trialing on, uh, the owner is really invested into the club. Uh-huh. And so he, 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 like the big decisions come down to him. And so he didn't think that I was at the level, which is fair to him. Right. Uh, and so, uh, basically we had a trial for one day and then they were just like, yeah, so we don't see you fitting here. And then I was like, well, 
no point of sticking around here mm -hmm. right gotta gotta keep moving it's that thing you've been telling me recently you're just like don't stop right yeah. even 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 if it's a lower league level that you're playing in don't, don't stop you never want to stop you want to keep going yeah. so now that i'm here in tulsa uh like i said just i was here for a birthday party where a really close friend invited me and and now we've got some other opportunities that has, has risen up from the usl championship so i'm just looking looking to see and just yeah and like we talked about this like uh like you just said but we talked about like how important it was like not to stop you know yeah. like what you just said yeah. about how like because i said i think the quote i said was like as soon as you go back to ottawa and mm -hmm. then you, you it almost flips the switch of like because like right now you're still in that like with your suitcases right over here you know yeah. it's like i'm yeah. ready like yeah. i'm going to keep looking you know i'm going to keep reaching out but as soon as you go back home you can still reach out to teams but it also flips to the switch of like, okay, I'm back home now. I can relax yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then that week turns into another week. And yeah. then the season starts up. You get more comfortable. And then like all of a sudden yeah. you go, like we said, a full year without playing with the team. Yeah. And then it goes into like, you know what? Maybe I just work with something else. Maybe I just do OPSM. There's nothing wrong with that if you're ready yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. But if you want to keep on playing, my advice is always don't stop. Keep bouncing mm -hmm. and bouncing mm -hmm. and bouncing wherever you can, even if it's fifth division in Iceland. That's it. Keep bouncing keep until you keep... find, and then play with the amateur team, you know, yeah. whatever. I go down to New Zealand. Semi pro, semi pro club. Yeah. It, like, you know, and so right now I think honestly, it wasn't that hard for me because going through this, I I've kind of like all this traveling that I've been doing, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, Hey, I haven't signed yet. And, and I'm not really like, I'm not scared that it won't happen or whatnot, but I'm ready. I feel like I'm ready that if I have to do, if I have to play with that semi-pro club for this year, get my games up, get my yeah. minutes up, get footage, then then I'll have to do it. Do you know what I mean? And so uh, I'm in that, that place where I'm just kind of like, like I know I can play at that level. I know I could be at the USL championship level, but I just have to, I have to keep going at it and I have to obviously prove that I can do that. Right? Yeah. And we and talked so. about, we talked about the uh, humility too. Of like what I said, I've seen so many players, like good players, all of a sudden not have the humility of being like, oh, I'll drop down to the semi-pro level. Yeah. I'll take, you know, a terrible Whatever. rookie yeah. year contract because mm -hmm. I, I rate myself as a good player. And I think it's good. You need to rate yourself as a good player and, and fight for the contract you think you deserve. Mm -hmm. But when that contract that you think you deserve isn't coming, yeah. take a step back and be like, you know what? Maybe I do take this opportunity. Maybe I do humble yeah. myself and play semi-pro. Maybe I do exactly. take, you know, a exactly. terrible few, however much money to play for this team mm -hmm. and because I invest myself for this opportunity to bounce back up, you know? Yeah, honestly, yeah, that's like, you couldn't have said any better. And it's just like looking, looking back at it, like, because I know eventually one of these days I'm going to sign that big contract. And when I do... I'll look back to moments like these. Right? Yeah. The moments when I'm sleeping at the airport yeah. and stuff. Like I had to do that recently because my flight was delayed and whatnot. So I had to imagine spending a night at the airport. It's cold, you know? And so like, I think that's what motivates me the most is like when I do sign that big contract and I know that I get there, right? Uh, like it would look, looking back to these moments. It's just. Yeah. What airport bigger. was it? Uh, in Savannah. So I slept, I slept in the Savannah was airport. Was it what, Georgia? Yeah, Georgia. Yeah. Georgia? Yeah. It was so cold, bro. Like, <laughs> honestly, it was just like, and yeah. you know what? That's not the first time that I've had to do this, by the way, uh -huh. sleep in the airport. I've had to do it before. Uh, yeah. When I was in DC one time, I had to sleep in the airport just because of like, you don't know where you're going to stay. It's tough. When I was in Australia, it was tough. It, like just looking back, back, like, and the amount of things that I've gone through mm -hmm. just like for soccer, you know, like, yeah. I'm just like, man, there's no way I'm giving up now uh, for all these things that I put myself through and, it could be there's an easy way out of this i can go back home like you said I go back home uh work and just just be happy just be comfortable but i don't want <laughs> finally to. finally be happy for once <laughs> <laughs> no but That's you know like, what i mean you know yeah, what i mean no, no, like no, i'm just messing like, with you. like man you like That's a lot of people you. don't don't know but like you have that status of like a pro soccer player but there's a lot of things that that goes in the background that you don't know right like, yeah like for me like i'm not wealthy i'm not like i don't i don't have that much money and I could just easily go and find a job and be working and getting paid bi weekly. But I'm like, nah, I want to be a professional soccer player, yeah, you know? So that's what, you, you get to play. You literally get to play yeah. soccer. That's another thing for last year. So, like, to add on the last year, it was so much fun because I would wake up, I would have soccer. Yeah. I didn't have to worry about anything. Like, mm. obviously, you'd worry about the, like, how you're performing and things, but I didn't have to worry about anything. Like, I just get up, I play soccer. I go home, I play soccer, wake up, traveling, like, meeting so many different people so yeah it's just one of those things bro that i've just been i've just been going through and i feel like since i traveled in new zealand and i traveled in australia it's prepared me for this moment 
right now mm -hmm. because it's like everyone's like oh if i don't sign now where am i gonna go like what yeah. am i gonna do and everyone gets like scared but for me i'm just like hey you know it's all part of it you know and god willing something good will, will happen you know what i mean there's very very few professional players that have not gone through a free agency spell yeah. of a few months to a year and mm -hmm. it's like i like even i mean you'd be surprised like i was just talking to a guy um who with uh, i don't know, I probably won't say the same i was talking with the guy uh who was on the mls team last year okay and he literally uh, today i was talking with him today this morning yeah. and he just was like yeah man you know i thought i was going to do that and then i held out a little bit too long yeah. um trying to look for another mls opportunity and he basically just said that the you know free agency was harder than he expected it with yeah. that more competition you know and then mm -hmm. now it's like he's trying to find a usl setup and he's having he's finding some but like he's just like i you know it's tough free agency is hard really and it's, but it's like you know it's mm -hmm. it's hard to not freak out it's like you want to hold out for what you think you deserve but you have to take the opportunities that come up it's a, it's like a very unique balance of all that um mm -hmm. and then so uh yeah, so they had a crazy sleeping in an airport. So I'm, I haven't yeah. slept in an airport. <laughs> you, well, you had to sleep in a train station one time. Yeah, did you? but yeah. it wasn't bad. Yeah. <laughs> but it was well, warm. It wasn't cold. It was warm. Yeah. Oh man, no airports are not like, like whoever's listening to this. Like, if you can, just try your best not to sleep in the <laughs> airport because it's so cold. Yeah. It's like you don't even sleep. I like you don't sleep because it's so cold and uh, obviously you're. Are you fading. sleeping outside or inside? Inside, inside. <laughs> <Just> but, uh, <laughs> No, but well, you know what? Actually, when I was in Australia, so this uh -huh. funny story, uh, I had a really late flight. Well, like my flight was at 5 a.m. in the morning and the airport didn't open 24 hours. And like I was kind of like freaking out. I was like, what am I going to do? Uh, if I want to go, I have to go now because I didn't know, like I didn't have anyone to take me to the airport. So I didn't want to wait on a taxi forever and just like cut it close and miss my flight. Yeah. Right. And so I was like, I'll just go early. I didn't know it wasn't 24 hours. So I went to the airport at like 1 a.m., bro. And then. <laughs> Uh, like the the airport wasn't open so i just had to like wait outside really in the cold yeah and like it gets cold in australia too but luckily for me after a couple hours one of the uh security guy guys came and he's like hey are you waiting for a flight and i was like yeah i explained to him my situation i told him why i was there and he was really nice enough like there was like these rooms where you can go stay and so like he brought me to the room and i just stayed there oh that's cool i was like really blessed and i was like wow this is like amazing because if it wasn't for that i would have been outside for like <laughs> For so long yeah man. that's great it's, it, yeah it is hard and that's like because the thing is too what, what why this happens is because also so like you said we're in like this limbo stage of professional soccer where you're not making hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars yeah. um but then at the same time it's like also too you're not making an income during this free agency spell so it's yeah. literally unemployment so yeah. then you're unemployed you have a set amount of money that you have that you have to like stretch and you never know how long you're gonna have to stretch it for yeah you're hoping that this one trial is gonna be it but you could uh -huh. be bouncing around like for a year and you know bouncing around bouncing around bouncing around and you're like do i have enough funds in the bank account to do this yep. and it's important what like young kids that are watching this it's like if you want to do this and you're interested in that yeah. like you need to have money saved, saved up. up you know you if, if your parents are going to help you with that you do you need to save up so you know 100%. don't get the next playstation 4 mm -hmm. i don't even know i'm so bad at video games is that I the never, next one i never bro, i never i never had a uh, a game console ever I, I, my last my last game console is an xbox 360 yeah. that was back in high did school you buy your, did you buy it yourself or I don't remember. Yeah. Honestly, it might have been through birthday money or Christmas yeah. money or something, or just a birthday. For I honestly have no idea. It was so long. It was my freshman yeah. year of high school. Like I've uh, let me change that. I've never bought like uh, like when I was really young. I had a GameCube that my mom bought me and like a mm -hmm. PS2 and whatnot. But other than that, like when I ever since I started working, I started working to save for opportunities like these. Right? Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. That's why it's like whenever I always see like a like a USL player bouncing around too that's in my city, I'm like, hey, yeah. come stay with me, come exactly. stay with me, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I know I've been there, yeah, and like you kill because you know that like you like for example, you're not having to get a hotel room. I'm not saying like I'm a saint for taking you in, but like yeah, you're not yeah. having to take a hotel room yeah. for the next two three nights. Mm -hmm. It's just two three nights that you can take a hotel room somewhere else, you know, and stretch mm -hmm. out your um, trial finding process as long as possible, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. so it's it's and i think there's a lot of like good fortune in in soccer because like you meet the same people like over and over yeah, right yeah, and so do. imagine like 
when you do this for me, like if, if like if ever you're in the same situation mm-hmm. and I've got that MLS contract, you know, and I'm playing big in Miami or wherever it is, <laughs> and you're like, oh man, like I'm going to be in your city, and I'll be like, yeah, bro, like comes come. No, to, you're just going to be like, oh, Matt Sheldon, you know? nah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Like, yeah, no, no, no. I'm an MLS. I'm <laughs> a, I play an MLS now. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't associate myself. Oh, you'll be with playing that. against. Yeah, you'll be playing against me. Now. <laughs> no, that that's it's true. It's true. You mm-hmm. you see, like the soccer world is so small. I, like even the mm-hmm. trialists coming in, it's like you ask him where you play and they're yeah. like oh yeah i play las vegas lights i'm like oh you know my friend this guy you know this guy this guy and they're like yeah i know this guy he's my boy it's, it's very cool um and then you said you have like also a opportunity with like a futsal opportunity right i don't yeah, know if yeah. you want to talk about that or yeah i will actually talk about that so uh like i think so i've been uh one of one of somebody that i used to play with they're really connected in, in to futsal with the haiti national team mm-hmm. and so there's a conca calf uh qualification cup game that's happening in Guatemala in a couple months and it kind of just like fell on my lap and it, I like it's I don't know if it's 100% I don't know if I'll be able to go because obviously I need to get my passport and all this stuff that you have to go through so it's not like 100% uh that this is this is happening but it's just another opportunity that I'm like hey you know what if I'm struggling like this and and later down the line in, in April this is opportunity to travel and to play kind of take my mind off of things i'm like why I, I would definitely take it yeah you know and it's one of those things that just like i just was like yeah so and it's, and it's like we said too of like never stop playing <laughs> it's like like i said even if it's a futsal never opportunity yeah. you go and you're doing that because then if a team's like so where's he at now what's he doing yeah. it's way better it's like oh yeah he's just at home in ottawa it's yeah. like oh no he's with you know this futsal team yeah playing down in this country yeah. it's like oh well it's a little bit better you exactly, know exactly. even if even if you're saying like where is he now and you're like oh he's uh playing usl league two over here yeah it's like oh that sounds better than oh what's he doing oh he's in ottawa what team is he playing for no uh team, yeah. no team he's yeah. training on his own though yeah. it's like if you're a coach what's more appealing you yeah. know so it's just never stop bouncing you know because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the minute that you stop it's like and you it's, start to yeah. get comfortable that's when it's i've seen it's careers really completely die that way well what i've heard is bro like I, i've heard that people say where if you don't sign for the next year like you're pretty much like if you're in the usl and you don't get another contract in the usl or you don't get it, it like abroad you're pretty much done yeah that's yeah. like that's the that's what people say it, you know? yeah and there's some truth behind it i think that it happens though because also the players kind of look at like the money they're making and mm-hmm. then a lot kind of reach you get older you start getting 20 like my age like 27 28 yeah, and you're like old. you know family is starting to come yeah. up and you're like and then you don't get that contract then you're kind of yeah. like maybe it is time I, I start to be realistic you know mm-hmm. maybe it is time i go and switch and to get a real job or and i think that it, it's more about that than like it being forced upon like your retirement being forced upon you mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. i've seen people's careers always like time over the years uh, you see five to ten friends like their careers kind of like fizzle out yeah and most of the time it's a decision even though it's like yeah i couldn't find another contract yeah. i bet if they were to bounce around and keep on looking and to keep on doing it yeah. that they could keep their kindle their their uh career alive it's like for me like mm-hmm. i had two years in the usl and then the injury and then i went down to new zealand yeah. like at that moment though like there, I really did come to a crossroads where I was like, I've had two surgeries now fixing the sports hernia. I missed the USL. Um, I'm like, do I try to rekindle my career? Do I have the humility to go down and do this league or should yeah. I, should I just call it, hang up the boots, you know? Yeah. But like, I was just like, yeah, no, I'll just keep, I'll go to New Zealand, whatever. I'll go yeah. over here. I'll keep bouncing. I'll keep bouncing. And yeah. then opportunities come up when you keep bouncing, you know? No, look, yeah. And then you get one opportunity and it works out. Now I'm back in the USL. Yeah. So I think it's like, I don't think it's, I think it's more of a mentality switch where it's like once you get once you play in the USL and then you're done, you a lot of players don't have the humility or they don't want to do the, take a pay cut or do whatever. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's the reason. But it is scary because it's things can change. One bad season, can one be, bad injury, yeah, and you could be. Uh, but it's the same thing. Like the other way too, things can change in an instant. Like tomorrow, yes. you could get a call and be like, "Hey, we want you to come in," right? So mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, that's how it happened for Tulsa for me is that I came back from New Zealand and mm-hmm. when, as soon as I came back, I was just, you know, do the planting acorns, talking to all my friends and every, I was like, Hey, yeah. talk, hit up the orange County coach, uh, at the time or the GM. Um, can I come in for a trial? Can I come in and train? I'm in orange County right now. I'm in San Diego, yeah. hit up the Fresno, my friend at Fresno. Hey, can I come in for a trial? What's the right back situation looking like? Can I come in and train? I can be up there, pay all my own way. Mm-hmm. And then just hit up everybody that I knew in the USL and, and then 
pretty much you get you know nine twenty whatever knows. Yep. But then one person at Tulsa was like, right. actually, yeah, we are looking for extra practice players. Yep. Like, okay, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> Fly yeah. out there, and then that one opportunity, and then all of a sudden I'm here for. That was I came out in August of 2018, so I'll be here for two full years. Like wow. it's kind of funny, but it's just like bouncing around, bouncing around, and like that one trial, everything switched. Yeah. You know, then I met Jeff, then I got affiliated with OPSM, yeah. then I obviously played in front of Mike Ensian, the head coach now at Tulsa FC mm-hmm. Tulsa. Mm-hmm. So it's it is it's just one little thing, and all of a sudden you're going to go to the next trial or the third trial later, and all of a sudden it's going to you're going to get there. You can feel the vibe right away. It's like yeah. I'm going to sign here. And then you go. And then you go from there. Yeah, it's like, I mean, um, like we already talked about, like Jeff was like, I, when I was in Ottawa up in, when it, during the combines in January, yep. I was like, what's going on, Jeff? Where, where are you going to play? What's, what's yep. the outlook, you know? And, and it's hard to ask that question because you don't want to stress players out. Because mm-hmm. if you don't have anything, it's kind of like, you know, yeah. man, just looking, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> it's tough to answer. And you kind of, and you kind of know, it's like, yeah, no, no worries. Yeah. Um, but I asked Jeff and he was like, no, I'm, we'll see. You know, I'm kind of talking maybe something in Austria. And yeah. all of a sudden, I see he signed over in Finland. Finland, yeah. Like, wow, that came out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it it did come out of nowhere because it was the same situation where, for him, he, he like, he had a really hard offseason because, imagine, last year, Jeff played so many games in the USL, mm-hmm. right? And he was a key player, uh, and obviously, he has a lot of experience because he's played in different locations. And so, even for him, where he's like, I don't know where I'm going to play next year, it's kind of like, what? Like, you played so many games yeah. in the USL, surely you should have someone that's like really keen on you and like you know how it is when you don't have a club it's just open talk right like it's never it's never like a sure thing so even if you're in contact with these clubs it doesn't mean anything Mm -hmm. right until you put that pen to paper and so for him it just kind of like popped up and they were like yeah you know what we want you to come in uh they seen they seen his highlight tape and they were really interested in him so he went over there he killed it and then now he's playing and he's he's starting and he's doing really well yeah. Good setup, right? So yeah, and we have like uh, some other like DJ. If you guys mm-hmm. obviously, I mean, if you've been watching my channel or seen yeah. the podcast, you know DJ Dean. Yeah, um, he's in Antigua. Yeah, like playing down there. Good for him. Have you like? Do you talk to him a lot, or are you? He messaged me. He's like, "Hey, man! Oh, it was so <laughs> funny." I got to say, I don't know if he even wants me to say this, but I don't yeah. care. I'm just gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, DJ. No, but it was like, uh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, he messages me, yeah. and he's just like, "Hey, man." Do you have any tips on like how to deal with like being homesick, you know, loneliness, yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And then I'm like talking to them, giving them my tips that I always give, you know, it's just mm-hmm. like focus, try to focus on something else. Like for me, this be- yeah. become elite, try to yeah. do like, we just literally talked about it the other five minutes ago. Why I don't get lonely is because I just work, you know? Um, and then constantly talk to your friends, talk to, you know, talk to people, you know, try to explore mm-hmm. all the normal tips I give about dealing with homesickness and laziness or loneliness. And then I realized I'm like, wait, how, how, how long have you been down there? He's like, oh, I got here like two days ago. <laughs> I was like, bro, already? He's like, no, 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 no. I'm not homesick. I'm not lonely yeah. yet. But I'm just, you know, I want to hit it in the bud, cut it in the bud, like yeah. nip it in the bud early. No, <laughs> I, I think he is because so we have like Snapchat streaks. So mm-hmm. I talk to him every day and I think he is because it's tough. It's his first time leaving mm-hmm. Tulsa. It's his first time leaving home. So but like, he's going to grow so much. Oh man. Like I tell him like every time I talk to him, it's so good for you to be there because you're going to in- encounter uh, so many different things. There, mm-hmm. Right. Like a day, there's a, be a day that you're starting and you're killing it. There'll be a day where you don't think you have the best performance, but that's going to help you so much. It helps you grow as a player and not even just for soccer. I feel like as when you person. do that, it helps you as a person, right? It helps you see the world and it helps you mature. Yeah. So like I've been telling him, but yeah, funny that you said that because he did, he did send me a snap. Like he's like, bro, he's like, I miss, he's like, I miss home man. he's like, I miss this. I miss yeah. that, you know? And I'm just kind of like, bro, it's like, I laughed because I'm like, yo, he's a, that's what you got to do. Yeah, you know? it's, it's tough. And I'm sure there's people listening to this podcast or watching this on YouTube or whatever, mm-hmm. or watch my vlogs. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's why people connected when I first started vlogging in Germany. Cause if you've been in that situation, you've gone abroad and played, it's yeah. very similar. No matter where you go, yeah. the uh, lonely apartment, you know, maybe with a roommate or something bouncing around, trying to find <laughs> a field, trying to do free trial memberships at gyms, trying to get in there and get a workout <laughs> in, you know, going to Airbnb yeah. and hotels, trying to, find, you know, couch surf. It's all very, every, every player has gone through it and, or will go through it or do something if, if they yeah. want to try Send, to start their career. Sending emails through soccer way. <laughs> yeah. You done that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, it's you get like zero answers. Feel, feel do as oh, well. Yeah, you'll message like 50. Oh, 
Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I think they just kind of get coaches on there. Um, but, and then, so now, uh, so now you're here when, I don't even know, when are you leaving? <laughs> when are you getting out of my place? I, <laughs> uh, I actually don't know when I'm leaving yet. I'm still waiting to hear on a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be speaking with Godwin soon. He'll be letting me know. But worst comes to worst, we have a plan. We have a plan A. We have a plan B. We have a plan C. Yeah. Worst comes to worst, I'll go back to Ottawa. I'll be training. Uh, and also, uh, there's the Athletical Ottawa team that mm -hmm. just started in the CPL. So uh, yeah. obviously, for me, I wanted to play away from home just because when I'm home, it's it's my comfort zone, right? Yeah. I wanted to step out of my comfort zone. But if I could get an opportunity to play with the Athletical Ottawa team, that would be great too mm -hmm. because it's a pro league, and I'd be playing in front of my family, so that would be good. Uh, but there's definitely a couple things, so it's not like yeah. If it you have, work a, you out have here, your goal, your plan A. That's a goal. Your yeah. plan B. That's a backup, and then you have your worst plan case scenario. I always have this. Yeah, exactly. So that's what that's what we've been doing lately, and I feel like that's why you need a representative or you need someone that that's been in the same situation as you to try and help you. And so, like these past couple of weeks, Godwin's been helping me through it all. So yeah, that's good. good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, yeah, but open. You have an open invitation to stay here. As long as you want. You could actually get if I go down to Dallas, you can keep Gucci company. You could if I'm still here, yeah. If you're still here, yeah. yeah <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully you get a trial. You leave my place soon. Yeah. Monday, not hopefully I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was good. Um, and then anything else? Anything else here on the podcast again? Anything else that you would wanted to say last time that you didn't get to talk about or anything? No, not really. Just like just like what we've been saying, bro. Don't stop. Anyone that's watching this video, uh, like... If you're in the middle of a trial, if you're in the middle of the season, whatever it is that you're doing, don't stop. Just keep pushing, right? Keep working on the things that you need to do to get better. Uh, that's one thing I'm gonna try and do better this year. Huh. And just work, work on my, work on myself. You know, focus and be harder on myself. Like if I say I'm doing this, this certain diet, I want to do this certain diet. If I want to say I want to do this workout to get stronger and faster, I want to be more accountable on myself. Mm -hmm. So just a like big like. That's pretty much it to all you guys who are just pursuing this this goal of being a professional soccer player. Like, mm. just keep pushing and don't yeah. give up. That's good. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Anthony. Um, Anthony, thank you very much. Your yeah. socials, um, social media stuff is all on the screen. Yeah. Uh, and follow me, guys. Getting to follow Anthony on Instagram, all that yeah. stuff. And then also thank you again to chaossoccergear.com for sponsoring the podcast. Um, your donation will be feeding us tonight. <laughs> that's, that's always good. Um, but seriously, but seriously, I really recommend going and checking out chaossoccergear.com. It's spelled like chaos, C-H-A-O-S, soccergear.com for just, if you want to try out their ball. I actually, it's a good ball. Are you actually going to say that? That part? The other part? What, about their feeding us? Yeah. yeah no, I'm just going to say No, I'm just kidding. No, they're a good brand. Go check them out. Link is in the description. And um, I've, I've had a couple actually the video i just posted on instagram have you seen mm -hmm. did you see that the nets game where it's like it. you hit the net and then you back up five yards and you try to hit it into the oh, net okay, yeah i've back seen it before yards. i've seen it before that ball the one of the balls that i'm using is the chaos aztec points. ball that, okay. from chaos soccer gear it's oh, decent cool. yeah it's like 80 bucks it's a decent price too I, i'd buy one <laughs> okay <Yeah. laughs> well maybe are you just trying to get one <laughs> don't give them a ball hey <laughs> don't give them a ball no but thank you very much and um we'll catch you guys on the next episode of the against all odds podcast so peace, peace out